Hey guys, thanks for stopping by the channel. Hope you're having a great day. Sorry I haven't posted a video in a while, but I've been busy testing out the Ice Giant Pro Siphon Prototype Cooler. You might have seen it on the Linus Tech Tips channel. Uh, you might have even read about it on Tom's Hardware. Uh, but I've been working with them on the side, doing some projects and stuff, and they finally said, Turk, we're going to let you off the leash. Why don't you overclock the snot out of this thing and see how well it does? Well, we're going to do just that. We're going to upgrade our test bench. We're going to put it through its paces and stick around. We've got some hardware bot records to beat. In case you didn't watch the video or read the article, here's the quick TLDR on this prototype. The Pro Siphon prototype is massive. It's about uh, a 240 by 120 millimeter radiator, but it is 110 or so millimeters deep. We'll post the specs here on the screen. And with that size, it's going to be really heavy. So Ice Giant provides a special mounting bracket that goes on top of your X399 uh, socket. A uh, couple screws go in there, or four screws go in there, and then you screw the entire unit into that mounting bracket. So it's kind of like the Noctua, but it doesn't have... Actually, it does have the spring retention. Uh, so hopefully that design translates into the production unit, uh, but I do believe the production unit's going to get slimmer, so around 45 millimeters or so. Uh, don't quote me on that. Check out their website for specifics. Um, but, but along with the cooler, it also comes with two 120 millimeter fans, and they are high RPM fans. I, I think they're quoted to be Delta. I think that's what the Tom's article says. Uh, but we opted to swap them out with some Corsair uh, static pressure 120 fans. Uh, that way we can increase our uh, static pressure going through the cooler in order to just optimize airflow or optimize the you know, cooling potential of the fins. Um, but it's a pretty decent cooler. Um, I'm not going to go too much into the you know performance metrics from a temperature perspective. Tonight is all about the overclock. So let's go ahead and throw this inside of our test rig and let's see what it can do. So before we got to overclocking, we actually were doing some experiments. For that, we were using some of these Arctic P12 PWM fans. Uh, I really like them. They're quiet. They actually produce a pretty good amount of uh, static pressure, um, but they just don't do the job for high airflow um, requirements. So we went ahead and replaced those with the SP140s uh, from Corsair as well. We need that airflow in order to provide some airflow across the VRMs, and so we could suck some of that heat off of our cooler. So we did replace that, and we also replaced our Gigabyte X399 Design Air for its aesthetic purposes with a much more potent workhorse. That's the X399 ROG uh, Zenith Extreme Alpha from ASUS, uh, well-reviewed from Tom's. I actually reviewed this motherboard myself, and... 
I really wanted it because it's got the massive VRM uh, capabilities. It's got the active cooler on there, and this thing was just built for overclocking. So I wanted to make sure I had the best of the best going into the tonight's overclocks, as well as we have plenty of cooling coming out. So now that we've got everything wired up and hooked up and everything looks kind of sane from a hardware info perspective, let's run some benchmarks. So the first benchmark we're going after tonight is going to be the CPU-Z CPU frequency. So a lot of the top ranked scores on any of these benchmarks for this processor are mainly going to be custom loops as well as LN2. But I think our goal tonight is really just to see if we can beat some of these AIO and some of these other water-cooled results, you know, because we're running an air cooler. You know, not a lot of people expect us to do too well. So let's see how far we can get. Right now we're running at a 4275 at a 1.375 volts. Pretty pretty spicy of a frequency and voltage. So let's give it a roll. And sure enough, uh, we've got a stable run. We are able to get some valid results. We got them submitted over to the uh, hardware bot, and we managed to land in eighth place here. So uh, we beat two people. That's awesome. Uh, proud of that result. Let's see what Cinebench R20 does. So a lot of news outlets like to use R Cinebench R20 as kind of like the go-to de facto standard, uh, but it's all it's not that great of a benchmark, but our system's able to do really well on this one. Uh, we managed to get fourth place on this one we, with a score of 14,831. Uh, we did have to dial back the frequency to a 4150 megahertz, still running at the 1.375 volts, and we were able to get fairly stable results after we dialed back our memory clock a bit. So we could probably improve the score uh, if we swapped out our memory for some higher data rates or maybe uh, fine-tune these ones that we already have. So, again, links down in the description for all of these different scores. So the last benchmark we're going to run today is going to be the Hardware Bot X265 benchmark at 1080p. Uh, one of our viewers recommended us run this one because apparently this is one of the uh, very contested benchmarks on the boards. So we gave it a shot. We didn't really test it too much. Uh, but we were able to actually crank out a pretty good frequency. Uh, I think we were running at, what, 42.75? That's pretty outstanding for me. Um, really proud of that result. Unfortunately, since it's a very you know, contested benchmark, we only scored 10th place on it. That's a top 10 finish. We beat one person. Uh, but overall, I think we did okay. We got 75.52, 75 frames per second on that run, so... Well, there you have it, guys. I, I just don't know what to say. The, I'm just really amazed at just how well the Pro Siphon prototype performed tonight. We, we managed to get on three of the different leaderboards over on Hardware Bot. We even got a top five finish on the Cinebench R20. You know, the Pro Siphon prototype managed to keep everything cool the entire time. There were some benchmarks we were burning almost a thousand watts at the wall uh, through my little power meter over there. So, Tip of the cap to Ice Giant for producing a pretty good uh, design concept. I just hope this translates into the production units coming in later in the spring of 2020. Link down in the description if you want to get in on those pre-orders. Uh, but that's all I've got tonight. If y'all want to see more overclocking, more benchmarking, you know we've got some 10980 stuff coming down the pipe. Make sure you hit the subscribe button down below. And if you want to watch some of this stuff live, make sure you go and check out my Twitch, twitch.tv slash theturk. Uh, we do it live. We do some viewer recommendations and viewer requests, and we answer your questions about all your tech content there. Uh, but again, thank you guys for watching the show. Hope you have a great night. We'll catch you in the next one. Later.